Hey, this is Jose Galison of No Way Jose. You can find me on the No Way Jose YouTube channel. You also find me just about everywhere podcasts are at. Today, my guest is Jack Lloyd. Uh, many of you guys will know him. He does the Voluntarist comic book series. He's always also here in, uh, out and about in other spots as well. Um, the the topic, I mean, obviously, is going to be comics. I mean, not obviously. Actually, I've met him multiple times. He's one of those guys you can talk to about a ton of shit. So, uh, but yeah, we're going to talk about comics and how they in, uh, interact with liberty and shit. Uh, as always, give me money, patreon.com. It's no way, Jose2020. If you want to do that, you can get my content earlier. If not, I don't care, whatever. Uh, as always, fucking Top Lobster. I fucking finally got his shit. It's high on liberty shirt. Uh, so, yeah, go check him out. He's also got my, uh, he's got some of my swag up on his site if you guys want to get that. And yeah, with that, I'm going to go ahead and bring on Jack. What's up, dude? Hey, Jose, how's it going? Good, good. Yeah, this is a f- we've met twice in real life, and uh, uh-huh. fucking first time we're doing a podcast together, so it's like, it's just kind of weird. It's like the other way around, you know? <laughs> in this liberty space, I've podcasted people that hardly met anyone in real life, but right. we, yeah, we've met twice now, so. That is yeah. true. It's more often the case that you like meet someone first online these days with liberty stuff, and that, you know, that maybe. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, kind of worked out. Like you're, you're kind of one of those ones I want people want to talk to for a while, anyways. Because as you can see behind me, we talked a little bit before. Like comics is a little bit my thing. I'm yeah. not as big of a comics head as I used to be, but uh, I mean, I'm definitely a fan. Clearly, uh, so yeah, it means I figured we could have a good time talking. Uh, kind of follow my for anyone who's been following my show for a while. I've kind of I've done a couple episodes of comics, and I have a template where I just kind of like to just for fun. You know, we'll me and you both talk about our favorite comics or ones best for new people. And then also like fucking most liberty minded because uh, I just think it's interesting how well like how how cool the medium comics can be to tell stories. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I mean as, as we've talked before, you you fucking you have the voluntarist comics. So I don't know if you want to tell everybody about that, you know. And also let them know who you are while you're at it. I kind of gave you a quick intro, but it was probably shit. So no, I thought it. Yeah. So I uh, in terms of the comic stuff, I have a comic book series that I have been working on uh, since about. Uh, you could say August 2012 and the comic series revolves around a protagonist who is kind of pitted against the government in the series. And instead of the typical state worshiping themes that are basically everywhere and all mainstream comics actually get somewhere, um, the comic book series has a default norm that the government is not good or not just the government, but government itself. Uh, so I would say that it is unique in the comic book space in a, in a wide degree. And I, I definitely think that it's a story that is worth hearing in terms of the plot and development and the character, but it's also something that is uh, worth exploring uh, in terms of just looking for Easter eggs and other things that kind of spur your interest in ideas or themes of liberty or different events in the world that you know may have happened. So it, it's got a lot of interesting developments that way what kind of tone does your comic take on? i I'll, i've honestly never read it i just haven't gotten around to it um but yeah i'm just i was kind of curious what tone it is because i know i've seen some of your stuff and it's very on the nose like the name in the, the superior like the voluntarist or something and yeah, so like a, a, a lot of them are very on the nose names so i don't know if it's like you are you're clearly is it more like comedic like parody or is it more mm-hmm. serious i'm just i'm just kind of curious what tone you're shooting for with it so um no the the actual comic book story is a real like serious comic book story you know there's uh, character development um and different types of uh you could say uh, turning points uh, and suspense that drive the narrative so it's it's not something that is you know meant to be kind of pure parody or like on the face uh i guess you could say just like preaching of of principles no it, it's just actually a voluntary story i use the covers and stuff as kind of like art pieces but the actual story itself when you open it up um follows along a uh you could say a traditional path of you know storytelling um in some ways in terms of just introducing characters and, and showing uh, conflict but uh in terms of the actual philosophy behind it and the narrative it's it's unprecedented i would say i I have not seen a comic book series uh, do what i do and that's even noting some other comic book series that that are out there that were made by libertarians uh, way back yeah i've 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 noticed too it's i mean we'll get into a little bit i i think comics have this thing where and also i think it's stories in general where like the the basic narrative of a story is like the hero's journey and they're Mm -hmm. like 
it just is in, inescapably like liberty minded in a sense. So it's it's funny how like so much of like comics has been pervaded by like progressive ideas or like you know liberal type stuff. But at its core, I mean, don't get me wrong, you'll see some really propaganda ish stuff that will push you that way. But a lot of times you just like look at what the core of the story is about, and a lot of times you're like. I mean, the hero's journey itself just kind of lends itself towards like liberty-minded type stuff because it's mm-hmm. it's weird. It's almost like at our core, like liberty in a sense. So even as much as they try to fight it, because mm-hmm. I mean, I mean that's gonna be one of the top. I don't know what ones you picked for your most liberty-minded one. That's one thing I've noticed a lot in comics. So like, mm-hmm. I mean, even the ones that aren't trying to be kind of end up being that way. It's just mm-hmm. I don't know. But yeah. Um, so you let's you want to get into it? Let's fucking. What's your favorite comic? Let's let's talk about that. So my favorite series in terms of the actual uh, story and writing, uh, I think that just really stands out to me is Invincible. And it's funny because that's very po- uh, popular right now, thanks to the show on Amazon. But I had actually come across that in the early 2000s, you know, when it first came out, because it was you know first being written in 2003. And I just found it fascinating. And I'd actually been, was reading it in like the library. And when I did that, I, uh, you know, kind of, kept in the back of my mind uh, eventually leading up to my own comic book series uh, was invincible because it just i just really loved the way they did their writing and uh did their tropes and their you know their their characters and their action their sequence and their art and it was a i would say a big emulation in terms of appreciation of, of what they did in that comic series that uh was a part of me wanting to do my own for sure yeah, I think we briefly actually touched on that at our when we were when I met you at the uh, the Libertarian like Florida convention or whatever. Because mm-hmm. yeah, there's one thing you can definitely pick up from your art that you do pick up a lot of like notes from Invincible. It's mm-hmm. pretty. Uh, I mean, it's it's not like on the nose on the nose, but once you 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 know that you're like, oh okay. Because, but yeah, I mean, Invincible is the shit. Have you watched the show yet? I mean, I I'm mm-hmm. this I, I'm not in the same place as you. I read I've read like 20 volumes. I think mm-hmm. I haven't finished. I'm still reading it, but I'm like. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's it's one of those comics I've been telling all my friends to read for a while, and then they don't listen, and the show comes out, and they're all like, "Hell yeah!" I'm like, "Yeah, I fucking <laughs> told you." <laughs> I, so, yeah, I reread the entire series just a few weeks ago, literally the uh, from start to finish, from 20, 2003 to you know, I think it ended about 2018. Like it was like 20, I forgot it was 25 trade paperbacks or something like that, 26 maybe. Um, I've read them all. Um, so yeah, it, it definitely is uh, a. A series that I really appreciate, like for many elements, but at the same time, um, a part of the inspiration you could say uh, was to go against what uh, I guess you could say the author in, in there was uh, going for, um, because Invincible does have many uh, themes of of worshiping central planning and rulers and governments, uh, and you know it's, it's just common. It's like so many comics, like you just basically think it's CIA propaganda the way it's done, but. I mean, uh, if you if you look at it from a Hoppe perspective, it's not so bad. <laughs> like, because uh, there a lot of the focus is on like monarchy and stuff. Because I know where you're getting. I know how the the, the series ends. So uh, like a lot of it is kind of weirdly focused on like if you do look at it as like monarchy being preferable to democracy, there is something there because they do focus a lot on like the the monarchs of different planets and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah, I, I know what you mean. It's very status comic in in, uh, in mm. and of itself, but for sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, definitely a lot of Malthusian themes and central plane themes. And so, mm-hmm. you know, to me, I was like, oh, OK, well, despite the great writing and the innovative ways that they did panels and things like that, they still fell into the same old trap of, you know, government is is the greater good, even if there's sometimes questionable things. And and in that case, you know, Invincible is not unique and original. I mean, there's a lot of original aspects to it, but not there. And that's why I was like, oh, okay, great. I'm st- still have a wide open opportunity for this kind of uh, storytelling in a way that nobody else is doing. So, yeah, no, that, that's, that is definitely true. I mean, it, I mean, it's one of those things as libertarians, you can't let things that are like not, it's like, I mean, sometimes it's like, I feel like if something's like really on the nose and in your face, it's like hard to ignore. Mm-hmm. But it is also a lot of times, like, just like me and you, I feel like you, you may experience this as well. It's just sometimes you just gotta ignore it. Like, you can see the, the underlying subtext messages they're telling you, and you just gotta be like, just shut up and enjoy it. <laughs> you know, like, like it, it is what it right. is. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Like, I enjoyed the Invincible series. That is the animated uh, adaptation, even though they like, Further the SJW stuff, uh, you know, made mm. it worse um, and, and changed up a number of things from the comic that, you know, some people call it modernizing, but it's like this is the same thing that they did with the boys um, that they did with 
man the high castle on Amazon. It's 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 the same trope that they just uh, keep amplifying the, you could say, third wave discourses and uh, you know worship of central planning, glorification of of communism, socialism, things like that. So, you know it it's irritating, but the show is still great. I I still love it. Still recommend it. It's you know it's it's really good so yeah no there there were a few like cringe lines that i did catch which to be <laughs> fair like i will give there is some because i did write it initially it was very much set in the setting of modern day so like there were references i think if i remember correctly in the comics that were like sort of kind of made references to modern day uh, things but mm -hmm. wouldn't make sense in a 2020 type perspective so sure. like i can kind of see but even then the, the the things they chose were a lot of times like I don't know who is the one writer that they appeal. I, you, you actually, you might not know offhand, but there's some writer that's like a super SJW, like a mm. uh, critical race theory type guy mm. that like they mentioned in passing. And it was very like teenagers don't talk about this shit. Like, well, what is this? You know, it was very weird. Yeah. No, no they definitely did that. I mean, they, they swept, swapped out some of the characters with like, mm -hmm. they didn't, it wasn't too annoying. I mean, it was noticeable. I mean, if you've read the comic, but right. like what well, they, they made uh, his girl his girlfriend who was like a generic blonde haired chick into a right. black chick which right I mean, whatever I mean and okay a <laughs> she's like I'm a fourth wave feminist yeah. like it made him more like I mean in, in the comic obviously <laughs> Invincible you know definitely has some like weaknesses and like shows some type of like you know more empathetic sentiments but they made him way more of a simp in this one like yeah in the in the animated adapta adaptation like definitely more way more simpy <laughs> yeah and to be fair with the chick thing i, I can cut all right it was annoying they went that way but it was probably kind of good they gave her some character because i don't know if you remember the role that well i guess you just said you just reread it but like she was just generic boring girlfriend that you knew like why is mark even with her you know what i mean like because you just more sense to yeah. me yeah that, may, that yeah. makes more sense. It's like, oh, he's just happy to have the hot girl as a high schooler, right? Like that's the yeah. whole point. It's supposed to be, why well, are you even with this girl? Because he's he was a dumb high schooler who was just like, oh, I want to be with this like hot girl. Like, and he yeah. didn't think about it. And it was the character development, you know, that happened with uh, Adam Eve that drove. <laughs> well, I think they they inferenced that in in, in the animated yeah. show. If you've watched it, so it is a spoiler mm. if you haven't watched the animated show. But I'm, I'm I guess I'm assuming the premise that most normie people even at this point from what I've seen in terms of the amount of people have watched it, have seen uh, mm. the animated show on Amazon. It, it's been that popular. So and, and, and they've definitely inferred it heavily that there's a oh. thing there. So, in the yeah, show, yeah, yeah. so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, exactly. It, it's just that it, it was very clear that those substitutions and those changes were done in a heavy, you know, kind of leftist, uh, or you could say central planning bent, uh, you know, appealing to all that SJW. So it's, it's funny. It's, you know, I mean, it, it, it you could laugh at it too because, because of how like hokey it is in some ways, but yeah, that's what I was getting at with the one, the one throwaway line. I'm going to, it's going to bug me later when it comes to my mind, who it yeah. was they were talking to somebody really famous for like critical race theory type stuff. Um, but yeah, no, like they, it, they had a throwaway line about it and it was just really weird. Like no one knows this shit. Like it was just, it, it just felt weird. Like why would you drop this in a line? Is mm -hmm. something a high schooler is supposed to say, like, it doesn't make sense. But right. we're going to move on to mine. Uh, I picked uh, for my favorite Swamp Thing with the Alan Moore run. I don't know if you've ever read that, but it's like the probably the Swamp run. Alan Moore is known for you know being amazing, basically. I mean, I'm sure you know this, but Alan Moore did V for Vendetta. He did uh, Watchmen. For, yeah, Watchmen. Uh, he's done a, he's done a bunch of big ones. He did League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, which is like a man. It was like a kind of they made a movie of it in like the thousands, so that might ring some people's bells. But yeah, yeah he uh, yeah he's he's big shit. Like Al Moore is like kind of the man in comics. In my opinion, he's my favorite comic book writer. Um, you yeah. definitely you were talking about lefty stuff and Swamp Thing. Definitely is like very. I mean, it kind of lends itself to generic, like, you know, foofy, friggin' like eco lefty type stuff. So, mm -hmm. and and it does. It very much goes in there. But like, I, I don't know. I, I don't mind like when it comes to stories. I don't mind if the moral, I, like, if the moral of the story is something I don't agree with. But it's, mm -hmm. I guess, it depends on how you handle it. And I always feel like Alan Moore did a really good job. Like, usually his stories would have a moral, and whether you agree with them or not, you'd still be like, well, that was a good fucking story. Like. Right. And he's actually, I'm pretty sure he's an Ancom. So, like, there's a lot of, like, stuff that, like, people like me and you are, like... Because, like, V for Vendetta, I really highly suggest anyone who's, like, of the anarchist ilk uh, to check that out. Because there is stuff that you will be, like, what the hell? Because it's very, like... Like, I always joke that it's, like, a 
that uh, V for Vendetta is like a uh, like a an an calm book boy fantasy basically because that, that's what it is like it's right. very lefty ish when you read it but there's a lot, a lot of cool stuff in the book because they go way more in depth in the book like it goes into like philosophy and stuff it's way deeper than you'd think it would be in the book mm-hmm. but uh yeah no Swamp Thing's my choice for my favorite it's it's like weirdly like a it's the, the whole run of Al Moore is with that is basically a beaut beauty and the beast but for dudes <laughs> uh that, that'd be a good way to put it like it's uh yeah it's because i mean it's basically a love story is what it is and it's about him him and the uh abigail i believe her name was but yeah i don't know if you have anything to go on that it's definitely a good one to check out the, the art is kind of dated but i kind of like it it weirdly fits mm-hmm. so especially for the time era it's very like what's like late 80s early 90s very much that type style mm-hmm. so i don't know yeah have you, you ever read that or no not I haven't read that. I've read all, uh, the entirety of Watchmen, um, and you know that's definitely one of my favorite comic books as well. In terms of you know being up there for sure, T- I would say even a close second to Invincible, um, just because I think the writing and characters are brilliant. Uh, I just I'm a huge fan of the superhero genres. You can tell between those two books, uh, but it, it's just tough. I think the art in uh, invincible is is just excellent like that's mm-hmm. that's another thing too that you know really draws me to it it's just beautiful art too so yeah the only reason i didn't pick invincible is because i'm not done with it so it feels weird to like put right. it as mine because right. right now where i'm at it's like probably already my favorite it just i haven't finished <laughs> it so it feels weird to call it it yeah i don't know if it sticks the landing because there's been you know there's so many shows out there that like will have be amazing and then the ending just sucks and just messes it all up so <laughs> it's kind of i'm like yeah. hoping it doesn't do the same thing to me but I haven't, I haven't heard that to be the case for people who read it. So no, I, um, I don't yeah. think you'll find yourself disappointed. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, best for new readers. You, you gotta, what's your pick for that? Um, in terms of new readers, I, I honestly don't have a, a specific series that I would recommend just because they're new. Um, more so, uh, I would say I just have like, uh, little, you know, f- favorites of my own that I, you know, I personally kind of like in terms of a sequence and <sighs> to pull those up, like mm-hmm. I'm a huge fan of uh, the amalgam comics. <laughs> that's niche. That's for sure. <laughs> right. So Dr. Strange Fate, uh, Assassins, you have uh, Amazon, which is Storm and Wonder Woman, things like mm. that. Um, you know, Iron Lantern. So Green Lantern, Iron Man, uh, Speed Demon. There you go. So Ghost Rider. So forth. Uh, I, I just personally think those are fun. Because someone who's might be relatively new might have heard of those characters before and just might be interesting to like see those kind of unusual stories, but they're you know very kind of action packed and, and intriguing. Um, so yeah, that that's that's what I'll go for. <laughs> yeah, that is interesting. <laughs> I mean, I can see it though. I mean, they, those are uh, definitely I don't know. They're well known. Yeah, and there's a lot of interesting mashups of, of them. Right. I've never read them though. I've I've, I've like watched like videos to kind of give you a summation. So I don't know if they were ever good. I always assumed they probably kind of sucked, but they just <laughs> had like some cool art. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. You would be able to tell me better, better, yeah, they're better if they're, they're good fun. or not. Yeah. They're <laughs> yeah. They're definitely fun. Yeah. But. All right. The one I picked, I kind of did a similar thing. It seems to be like you're doing like one offs. I did a uh, God Country by Donny Cates, which he's like mm-hmm. a more of a modern writer. Uh, I highly suggest it that the. It's just a one volume. That's it. Like just because I do think one of the best ways to get into it is you, I don't really know if I'd want to send someone off on like an ongoing series to start them out. So something like a one a one and done type thing, a uh, you know a self contained story. Like and that one's great for it. It's just a it's a story of a dude who fucking a, a sword falls from the heavens and he fucking picks it up and this sword is apparently the god of swords and now it has chosen him to wield it. And he, uh, this, the guy who picks it up is this old, like he's kind of known for being like the town badass, but he's like old now and he's kind of, he has dementia. So he's like, he's just not all there. His dad takes care of him or not his dad, but his kid, his son takes care of him. And then his son has a daughter 
And it's it's actually really I'm not gonna lie, I fucking cried at the end of the book. Cause it's like really beautiful. Because wow. what happens with a sword is it gives him his memories back. So while he's holding the sword, he's basically like a normal human again. And it obviously gives him like some badass powers. So some like crazy fights in the book. Cause like come to find out these other gods that used to wield the sword come to get it back. And like, so it's him fighting them off to be like, no, I'm keeping the sword. And the whole time his whole family is like, just give him back the sword, just give him back the sword. But for him, it's like, if he loses that sword, he loses everything. And it's mm-hmm. kind of, there's a lot of great character stuff there. Like between him and his son, like they always had a really rough relationship. Cause I'm pretty sure like, I think his like wife died. So he pretty much raised the son alone. I'm, I'm, I might be wrong, but like, so they, they always had like a relationship. Him and and it's, I don't know. It's really beautiful. You come to find out like why he's so stuck on like not wanting to let like, go of the sword. Also how like his, like the relationship he develops with his granddaughter because he never really got to meet his granddaughter because he hasn't been there for the entirety of her life. Like just mm. at all. He's been, you know, nothing going on up there basically. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's really, really beautiful. That's like, I mean, really that's honestly could make in my favorites too. It's a really great book. Um, Donny Cates is an amazing like writer right now too. So like if you're even like, and also if you're like looking into getting stuff in general, just go look for Donny Cates stuff. Like I know he's doing, I think he did Venom recently. He did, uh, he's doing everything. And th- this book was like kind of when he first hit the scene, roughly when he started kind of burgeoning into like the mainstream like companies but yeah he's an amazing writer i, I definitely highly suggest and you go check it out i doubt you probably read that I'm, you said you hadn't before had you yeah no. I, I i highly suggest it's a great book um but yeah um what's your most liberty-minded <laughs> pick for that <laughs> well that one will be <laughs> voluntary <laughs> for sure oh. absolutely okay shameless yeah. plug huh <laughs> It really is. I, yeah. I, I, there's, I've seen a lot of different comics that you know supposedly support liberty. It, it just there's only one that I've seen that actually is like very liberty oriented, um, and that's I would say in terms of like principled liberty and actually like having that be robust. So yeah, voluntarist comic series kind of fits that niche. But I do have some other interesting pieces to show <laughs> in a comparative that you know I think you would find fascinating. Um, for food for thought, you know, anarchy mm. and detective comics. So detective comics with Batman introduced the character anarchy. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that's an example of how, you know, anarchism is portrayed very often in, uh, you could say the comic book world. Oh, let's pull this up real quick. So you can see right here, you know, mm-hmm. there was a treatment, you know, on anarchy and, there's they're really cool covers and stuff so so <laughs> anarchy yeah you know got the green lantern ring there and they continue the, the story on <laughs> have you seen the pictures of the most recent uh like that thing recently where they had the boot the batman captured batman i mean it's they were clearly doing a parody of the boot boys but it was um oh really it was uh they call them the igloo boys i believe <laughs> really yeah, no, it was, uh, and they, they were all, they, they, I think they said they were like alt-right racists. Uh-huh. Uh, it was pretty on the nose. Uh, Magnus Panvidia, he he shared it, so he might might still be able to find it on his wall. Uh, yeah. By the time this comes out, it'll be probably buried deep on his, on his timeline, so there's no point. But... <laughs> That'd be interesting to see. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I know. I'll like have to send it to you. An hmm? honest uh, portrayal of libertarian values or even, you know, general anarchism uh, in a lot of ways um, without it being kind of deemed as evil or just meaning a substitute word for chaos. Yeah. And uh, I have some other comics I'll show you later whenever you, sh- after you show uh, your favorite that deal with that specific issue of like how comic books treat the concept of Liberty. Yeah. Well, this one is one of the ones that kind of doesn't fit the mold uh, for me. It's Superman red sun. Uh-huh. They made a movie about it recently, so they did an animated one. It had some minor differences, if mm-hmm. but nothing too big. But I mean, the basic concept of this one is it's a I think they call them Elseworld stories in DC. But uh, right. the idea is in this story, Superman landed in Kansas. He landed in Soviet Russia, and mm-hmm. so he kind of became this. He grew up in you know that era. He became kind of a a you know a what's the word for like a follower of Stalin. 
And he still is, it's weird because in the story, he very much has the same morals in a sense, but he just has a different political ideology. So it's, mm-hmm. it's a great, right. I, I love Sumin Ren So because it's a great example of how like communism, socialism, whatever fails, even when, you know, it's like that Milton Friedman quote, like what better, what, what angels would you have running it? Like, even right. when you have literally Superman, like the most morally upstanding individual you can think of running it, it still goes to shit. Because like I mean, and, and it's and it's kind of beautiful, like the way that the whole story ends. It kind of like is an epiphany for Superman, and he kind of is like, oh shit, and yeah, and it's funny too because on the flip side, uh, Lex Luthor is guy slash sort of bad guy because he's mm-hmm. essentially in a in a way kind of the he's the symbol of America in a sense in this comic, and he's still an asshole. It's still the same mm-hmm. old Lex Luthor. He's a still right. shitty a shitty person, but he is on the side like the essentially the. I mean, obviously, like me and you would both say that, like you know, the United States has its flaws, but he kind of is a representation of the symbol of freedom, if you will. Right. So he has that sort of roughly political ideology, and it's just mm-hmm. interesting to see that even him being an asshole, like how he kind of wins out in the end because he has the correct ideology in that sense. Um, yeah, a really, really great book. Definitely check out. It's it's another one that's like a one and done. So I mean, even great for new readers too. Um, yeah, but yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> have you read Superman Red Sun or no? Um, I've read some of it, but I've seen the animated adaptation of it. Mm. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. pretty much it. The yeah. only thing that bugged me, I don't know why it really bugged me when I watched it, is didn't they imply that Superman that he killed uh, Stalin in it or something like that? It's been a while now. I'd have to yeah, look at it. I, I believe they did yeah. in the movie, but I don't think it happened in the book. Because a big a big theme of the of the book and, and in general is the fact that he still was like morally him he still didn't kill mm-hmm. still didn't what whatever so like it it, it kind of like sullied that in the, in the movie i'm like what the fuck mm-hmm. <laughs> like why like it, it didn't make make sense i mean I don't know, i'd have to go back and look but i'm pretty sure stalin like dies in his sleep or some shit in the book or something mm-hmm. i don't remember so the fact that he killed them was a little bit off i might be wrong though so well, he's a commie after all so <laughs> yeah <laughs> um so you said you want to show me some more about the comic or um, yes. Yeah, so like just another example of how the concept of Liberty is traded in, in comic books. So this is DC's agent Liberty. And this is, um, I would say it, it's a, a comic from the early nineties where, um, you know, this might ring a bell, uh, you know, the situation with Ruby Ridge and Waco and things like that, um, were hot button issues during, uh, I would say, uh, just around this time. Uh, of course, that week was a little bit later, but uh, the idea of like they called them right wing uh, militia groups was is, is like coming up in the 90s. And so this was the comic book world's taking on of that concept. Uh, but of course, in there, too, they uh, demonize people and, and um, I guess you could say uh, kind of downplay them as, you know, bad uh, because they want freedom and things like that. So it, it's it's definitely one of those stories that gives you an insight into how mainstream you know comics entertainment uh tries to shun those who want liberty so agent liberty is a good comic book for for seeing that concept unveiled they just had a i don't know if you've watched the the most recent i forget what it's called it was like the winter soldier and falcon or whatever that like show on uh i I watched it and they had you they had u.s patriot in that which is like a similar thing which he was a I guess in the comics at one point was supposed to be a replacement for Captain America. And he ended up being a like alt right type, like racist dude as well. And right. I, I'm really, now that you mentioned, I'm kind of like, want to go back and look and see like when they created that comic, if he mm-hmm. uh, like w- when they dropped it. Cause it is like, I wonder if it was around that same time period. Cause that was kind of like you know, the militia movements and stuff. And he was right. kind of like, I remember how he was originally wrote in the comics. He was more like hardcore in that type of way, but also was like a racist and shit. So they, they clearly were playing that game. Yeah. Comics does have a, a bad history of like being caught up in propaganda. <laughs> oh yeah. No, it always was from the beginning. I mean, obviously the government used uh, comics and animation to like promote war efforts and stuff, world war two and things like that. This uh, right here is one of the other, um, you could say Liberty oriented comic books in existence. Are technically principled. They even has a forward by Tom Woods. This is made by Johnny Rocket, but he's not making it anymore, as far as I know. But he did uh, manage to pump out, I think, at least one issue, maybe two. Um, but yeah, not very rare to find an actual, you know, voluntarist or principled comic book series out there. 
that comes from that bet. Yeah, no, I, I'm going to have to go look and see when they uh, created that character, U.S. Patriot, because that is clicking now, too, because it is like that is a common thing. Obviously, like Superman and Captain America were both like products of like, you know, was it World War Two? I forget. I know, I know they were like the, the famous like animation of Superman fighting off uh, like, I don't know, was it Hitler and shit? And same thing with uh, Captain America. Right. So, yeah, I mean. I mean, they actually didn't. I'm pretty sure there was like a, a bust of the comics like for a while shortly after like the World War II because it kind of like dropped in sales because it wasn't didn't have as much propaganda to kind of ride off of anymore. So there right. was a period of time where it kind of dropped off. And that was like one of the, you know, there's like the Golden Age, Silver Age, yep. all that stuff of comics. And that kind of was, I, I want to say that was kind of the interim for one of the ages. I just forget which. So, mm. yeah. Uh, with that, I guess, uh, if you got, do you got anything else you want to mention while we still got you on? Yeah, uh, this is um, The Globalists. So this is another uh, liberty-oriented comic. I don't know if they're still in production right now. I haven't seen them do it, but it's made by an Irish guy uh, named Nigel um, in terms of if you want to see you know comic book series that have a more liberty theme. But in this case, The Globalists are the technical protagonists, and they're trying to suppress liberty, uh, you could say, for globalism. And it's, Wait, like in a serious sense, or are they clearly being being a parody? Like the, no, it's a serious comic book sense. These are real. Oh, comics. yeah. Real. <laughs> so this is the opposite of the one you showed before. I got you. Right, right. <laughs> uh, it's one of the uh, comics out there that actually shows voluntaries. Uh, hmm. so let me see if we can get this uh, on screen here. There we go. If you see right there, so voluntarius actually makes a cameo. <laughs> in this series so very interesting uh piece of history there in terms of liberty and and, and comics do you ever uh, did you file the lawsuit or, or what <laughs> no 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 i'm just kidding no, kidding. No. Uh, no 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 i'm friendly with him and he's cool and stuff um mm. and i said of course he, he was he wanted to know if like if all this could make a cameo i was like oh yeah of course of course yeah um in terms of Inter like some of the most interesting comics I could say I own for, if you're a uh, and cap and economics junkie is I actually have some very rare comic books from the Federal Reserve of New York. The Federal Reserve Bank put out their own comic book series and in their comic book series they talk about money they talk <laughs> about banks they talk about inflation they talk about credit they talk about monetary policy and they even talk about the origins of the federal reserve system and wh why that's fascinating for this comic book series is that it, you actually get to hear uh, what the federal reserve bankers think of what it is that they're doing and the narratives that they tell about how it is that they're uh, doing their stuff and it's kind of funny because these are written I think in the 80s uh, maybe late seventies, but definitely eighties. And uh, in reading it, you actually have some kind of admissions into like the politics of what was going on in early America. And you could say, you know, their view of what they were doing. Uh, so it, it, it's fascinating. I mean, these are real pieces of, of history here in comic book form, which is wild to think about propaganda pieces from the federal reserve. Um, and so, yeah, reading it is, is a wild trip. But there's some interesting stuff in there too. Like it talks about actual, you know, the history of money and like how money arose. And they actually talk about market-based money and gold. And, you know, they go through, they, you can see here on the cover, even they have like the Chinese Tao, Lydian Turkey, um, Syracuse uh, gold coins. Um, they talk about checkbook money, Babylonia, um, you know, basically using tallies and things like that. It's, it's really a uh, uh, fascinating uh, history uh, on, you could say money, credit, banks and so forth so no, that is really interesting i didn't know that was a thing they did but that uh definitely checks out like we're getting it with the history of comics but <laughs> oh yeah no, I mean, I have a, there's a lot of you know stuff with culture and and other things like that it's quite fascinating oh actually i do have a i just realized i do have a very special invincible here so which one's that this is a probably pretty rare to get i guess at this point number zero uh <laughs> issue um and says only 50 cents so maybe was this i'm not exactly sure it was like a free comic day one or something I, it almost <laughs> looks like it but it doesn't say free comic day so i don't think it was but this is actually i, di I didn't realize i had an invincible in the stack 
Um, yeah, it's it's almost like a special, I think, original teaser. So this is Kirkman, Otley, and Crabtree. And this one, let me see the date on this. Number zero, April 2005. So pretty wild. Yeah. No, that's nuts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a lot of interesting comments. To say the least. <laughs> uh, with that, I guess. Uh, I mean, if you you want to go ahead and drop your plugs. All right. So this is my plug. His name's Sal the Agorist. Now, okay. Uh, <laughs> no. The uh, plugs right now, I would say, are the Voluntarius comic. Uh, that's a big one to check out. Um, easiest way to look it up would just be to go to the main website, Vol Comic. That's V as in victory, V O L C O M I C dot com, volcomic dot com. And there's a link to latest campaign and, and past comic book issues. So um, that's that's kind of the big deal. We're actually over 100% funded. I think we're at um, 108%. And we're very close to actually breaking through the first uh, stretch goal. Um, so that'll be pretty cool if we actually hit that. I'm not sure if we will, but we're, we're, we're pretty close to it. There's also another favorite. <laughs> Superman alien versus aliens. I love that series. Superman versus, you know, uh, always oh Batman versus predator, Superman versus aliens. So I heard the Batman versus predator, you know, Superman versus aliens. I feel like that's a, they must've found a way to even the odds. Cause I mean, aliens are pretty, pretty boss, but they're still not that good. No, <laughs> it's not good boss. but it's, it, yeah, it's just, I, I'm a big fan of, um, unusual comics and like special series kind of thing. Like that's, that's kind of my, my, uh, shtick. When it comes to comic stuff like that yeah well with that um i'm on uh, the no way jose youtube channel you can also find me anywhere audio podcasts are at hit me up at the liberty movement global at gmail.com uh like share subscribe comment or, or not, well yeah comment too all that good stuff as also you can hit me up on twitter at jose galison or at galison jose and with that young dude it's been great having you on man thank you it's been great to be on thanks jose no problem.